Dire Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Google's not doing so hot, <laughs> and Maneski is kind of like middle of the pack towards the top of the group, but they still need to win like a couple of really secure that spot. Yeah, to be more specific, he got Maneski at 4-2 and two record, Moogle at 2-4, and four. so again, math mathematically, Moogle's definitely still in it, but uh, a win right here would be nice. If they don't win this one, then things are going to be pretty difficult, to say the least, but yeah, Moogle, of course, the second open qualifier team, but uh, people would know them by the name of Miracle over there, formerly of uh, Fnatic, I believe Five it was, and a player remaining. that uh, people recognize definitely from the Southeast Asia region, but yeah, these these uh, matches Reserve in general time. with Southeast Asia, again, I haven't cast a lot of it before Sorry. this event, but I've noticed that uh, they're very chaotic in a lot of ways, and it's it's definitely entertaining, though. So they're they're scrappy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they that's like, a good way to put it. Yeah, they like to fight. Uh, I I think that most of the time when you're watching C Dota, you, it's really hard to predict what's going to happen because their ideas of how they want to play the game are really different from a lot of Ten the other regions. Seconds so remaining. I think uh, one of the big reasons why another team, obviously TNC and the C qualifier, as well as having remaining. so much success, <laughs> is because they have a captain that's bringing different ideas. It's not necessarily that those ideas are better, it's just Need that most of the C teams success. are not used to playing against it because it's a Radiant completely different thought process. Pick. Yeah. But between these two teams, Moogle and Maneski, of course, we're, we're pretty much as C as you can get. Well, kind of, because at the same time, Mineski, speaking of foreign players coming in, they have MAG, they have of course, Mag, yeah. as well as even ARK, actually, uh, from the Dying CIS region. Me. So that that's one of the other things that, that we've been noticing with Mineski as far as a little bit of a change. In fact, we saw them play Broodmother, I think it was, in their very first match. Matt, MAG, of course, has that history himself playing it. It wasn't a loss, unfortunately, but uh, still, we saw them bust that out, so... Uh, that's something to keep on the Radiant mind, at least perhaps if you're Moogle. But as far as picks go, you know, Sanking into the Knicks and Lena, and then a co-op response here from Moogle. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. It's pretty much game. as stock standard as you can get. Yeah. Like, this is, everyone's picking Queen into Lena, because Ten mainly you can remaining. you can gank the lane. Queen does pretty all right against Lena in lane, even without Five outside influence. Remaining. And later on, you know, Queen scales fairly well. Maybe not quite as much of a right-click powerhouse as Alina can be, but she has her own utility, like you get to 5, you get the nice spell lifesteal and stuff, so she definitely has a, a lot of merits, and Sand King is, in my opinion, one of the, the best heroes just in the game, period, because yeah. he can do so much. He can always manage to find his farm, he's got a good team fight, he's hard to gank, you can use him as like a side lane pusher sometimes, too, he, just, he, he brings it all. In fact, we have a monitor in here of showing a, a, the European region now just getting started, and lo and behold, first, first pick, pick Sand King. King in that one, too. Yeah, I, I, I would believe that this hero has to be out there as far as one of the, if not the most picked hero uh, in uh, between all the regions, even, Dia to kind of justify your point that much further. So, yeah, as far as, like, these four positions go, Nick, Sand King, Clockwork, Night Stalker, those are kind of like the four almost that come to mind. In fact, those two banned, and then again, the others being picked up right here between the two teams. So now we got a Puck Lifestealer on the other side for bands. You have an Ursa really? ban now coming out as well. Is there any reason why maybe Ursa would have been banned here, Five or is it just maybe a comfort remain. hero from Moogle? It depends, I guess, uh, what Maneski want to play as their Radiant off team So ban. Ursa is one of those heroes that, against specific offlaners, Timber, anyone who really wants to play hyper-aggressive, you know, sometimes Axe as well, anything that walks into the creep wave, 
Ursa is just going to completely annihilate because he just stacks Fury Swipes. You yeah. can't Ten play the aggressive seconds. style that you necessarily want to, so that's that's one reason you could ban it. It's a hero that is Five able to secure Roshan remaining. very easily, so maybe Mineski are scared of some kind of snowballing from Moogle already opening Reserve up with Queen of time. Pain. It's also a hero who wants to play a very fast-paced Dota. So there's a lot of reasons. I, I personally don't rate Ursa that highly as a hero that wins games, but rely a lot on momentum and being able to get a lot of fights and objectives early. I think it's a hero that is conducive. I'm waiting for this fourth band now to be coming out again. The Broodmother taken away from Moogle. We we're just talking about that with Mag. Having that history and even playing in that first match there, like I said, even despite the loss, it was still clearly very anno annoying. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve uh -huh. time. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. But right now, at least, a little more standard. But again, they ran into support there. So I'm just saying it's still an option. I guess you could be looking at And they go Darkseer, though, with a third pick. So this makes a lot of sense when you see the Jug and the Ursa ban. This is a hero that really wants to pressure the lane hard. And we talked about, you know, standing on the creeps, being able to be aggressive. Heroes like Ursa and Jug are very good at dealing with that. Ursa will just hit you. And one stun, basically, with an Ursa can just be the death of an offlaner. So yeah. you really want to emphasize. Ten seconds remaining. Takira. Dire team pick. Seven in this game. No, he's on TNC, of course. So, no, coming up from Ineski, though, as their support. Anti -mage. A right. Very quick anti mage. Radiant All right. Team ban. It's a pretty good anti mage game so far. The one concern, I guess, is after having seen a Jakiro, knowing that Darkseer is a, a good hero at pressuring the lanes. I think that Maneski is going to want to try to push the pace a little bit faster. But with what Moogle have currently, they have Ten three heroes that are relatively remaining. good at early game fighting. You know, Witch Doctor's got sustainability, high damage, <sighs> good disable, Queen, very Dyer good mid hero, good mobility. Same thing with the Sand King, very good at being able to get around the map and, and kills. So it seems almost like a, a four protect one coming in here from Moogle so far, whereas yeah. Maneski, they're much more oriented around we're going to win our lanes. We might not have the best roaming Ten potential. Moogle's roam is far superior just by having the Sand King alone than that what Maneski had. But their static laning phase on Maneski is still quite good. Like, Vakiro is crazy good stats. One of the highest level 1 damage nukes in the game. Very, very annoying to deal for any offlane. Last pick for Moogle is what going to be an offlane here. Speaking of that, as the Omni Knight ban from Maneski and then Five Sven ban. Side of Moogle coming out. So, what offlane options do we have left? Reserve be relevant time. right here. Batrider was banned in that four spots. There's a ton of offlanes banned, actually. Yeah. I think once that really tight hunter off the tip of my head, I mean. I mean, no matter what they pick for the offlane, he's going to struggle. So, maybe they go back for something that has some, like, jungling potential. Okay. Because, like, they have Jakiro safe lane already. You have to assume that Maneski are going to last pick a core. So they need some kind of flexibility in their offlane. It can't be a hero that's just like completely reliant on sitting in the lane and soaking. It has to be able to 
like secondary jungle as well, or they can potentially run a dual offlane with the Sand King. That's uh, the other option as well. Is it like an LC then? Perhaps comes to mind. And press the attack could be decent here. Yeah, LC is actually pretty solid. It's very hard to kill that hero. You can purge a lot of the the buffs. You can even stop like chain stun by just using press the attack on whoever gets initiated on by the Nick. Natural BKB carrier. Mineski's all magic damage currently. <laughs> The only downside to picking the Legion is that it's kind of a farm heavy hero, whereas you already have an anti mage. Yeah, true. So you kind of want, I don't know, it's, it's not an easy pick. There's a lot of different directions you can. I just feel like Legion is strong against the enemy team, but it's not necessarily strong in how it synergizes with Moogle. Maybe Earthshaker could be another one. Stun and doesn't soak up as much farm. Yeah, you can block the lane with Shaker as well. I yeah. think it's all right. So they've had plenty of time to think about this. Uh, Mineski used their reserve time earlier on in this draft, so they're down to 14 seconds only for the final pick coming up. Not the biggest deal, but Moogle, they had plenty, almost two minutes, and they're planning to use it. But they're confident with this as we stress. I mean, it's, I don't even know if it's mathematically the case, but really feels like a must win. Ten seconds remain. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Blood seeker. A safe line blood seeker, which you are most likely support, and then you know, Ninja Boogie is also playing support next, so he'll be. You know, finding whatever he can, roaming either walking top or walking to the bottom lane, but we'll mm -hmm. see. I, I have my reservations about how much he's going to be able to get out of his lane if it is, in fact, offlane Tusk. Yeah. Because Jakiro just will poop on him. It, it is <laughs> so hard to to go to a lane as Tusk unless he's going to have a second... Offlane. As well, so again, at least according to the players and everything, it seems like that could be the case, but you're right, he's definitely up for a very difficult game. Five Bloodseeker, the remaining. final pick, by the way. Let's talk about that for a second. You know, Blood Rite Silence could be powerful against a hero like Quap. Uh, the Rupture, why do you think of the Bloodseeker pick here? It's an anti-mage counter. Okay. Uh, hard counter, actually. So the difference between the anti-mage and the Queen Blink, the way that Rupture works is if you travel more than 1,300 units in one second, you do not take Rupture damage. So what Queen can do is she can start moving with Rupture on and then blink, and she will not take damage from Rupture. Okay. Or you can blink and walk really fast, which is the harder way. You preferably want to be already moving. When you... uh, but because you're technically traveling 1,301 units in one second because, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever, you don't take the Rupture damage. AM can't do that. AM's blink is shorter, which means that no wow. matter where you blink, you're going to get hit by the Rupture. And it does hurt a lot if you max range for Rupture on AM. Uh, the one one thing that I am kind of curious about with the Bloodseeker is a lot of teams, they like to pick strong lanes with Bloodseeker because then you're harassing, you're getting the passive buff, you're getting all this bonus damage, the movement, and it kind of helps you crush your lane. That's Prepare that's what the biggest battle. benefit of having a Bloodseeker is. He just owns his lane. Yeah. I feel like in this case, he doesn't really even have to own his lane. He just has to get level 6 and, and chase that anti-mage around and make him happy. A subpar game. Well, Ark going to be planted here, of course, for the one position for Mineski. Dave up to line up towards the bottom lane. Tusk is smoked up currently, but is in the vicinity of the bottom himself. Sanking the boots have been purchased. Kai expecting him to move around pretty frequently. But some very aggressive wards. Well, not really very aggressive, but uh, one at the bottom shrine. And you have one in the mid coming out from Mineski here as far as the Radiant wards go. For their vision. Why do you think the Shrine Ward over here? Well, they're probably assuming the same thing that I was, that it might be 2-1-2. Kai from Moogle might end up just making his way towards bottom. 
If it's just an offlane Darkseer, Anti-Mage Witch Doctor will be plenty. You don't need to commit a third hero. And because it's Lina mid, uh, he might kind of spend a little bit of time there as well, depending on if Ninja Boogie is, is there or not. So what I assume is Ninja Boogie is probably just going to mirror the movements of the Sand King. So having that ward on that shrine guarantees that if Kai makes his way towards bottom, they're going to ensure that Ark gets whatever the he wants out of the lane. Begins. Gotcha. We're here to protect him as well. Banner Rune's picked up. Really no contention, of course. Into the uh, lanes we go now with the creep spawning here. So, yeah, curious to see how this Tusk does once again. The bottom does actually get ice shards from the beginning. He doesn't have a uh, stout shield either. No. Like, Rior is going to walk up to him. He's either going to go for the liquid fire or the dual breath either way. He's going to deal a tremendous amount of damage, especially oh. because there is no stout. Nice block there for the Tusk as well. He's can to make sure. as close to his tower as possible. I'm kind of warning if the intention was to even block it a little bit more effectively, but only one creep kind of got left behind in the end, so I don't know how effective you can actually be with that. It's but. tough. It, the way that it used to work is Ice Shards would completely block creep pathing, kind of like Fissure. Yeah. But it doesn't do that anymore. Okay. So it delays it a little bit, thus in position a little bit better, but <laughs> see right there. Makes up Bloodseeker a little colder, I guess, but not the biggest deal in the world for him. Again, Nick's assassin is actually now down here at the bottom lane. You got the stack happening as well. For them, they're gonna look to take that out top lane. No darks here. Could be in some trouble. Kai's roaming in. Pearl strike ready to go. Anti mage doesn't have blink just yet. Just the mana break. Doesn't have surge either though on mag. Of course, with that level one ion shell. And there's the pearl strike finally connecting. Just a matter of time. And they let Merkel take the last hit. For the Very first nicely done. I don't think he was expecting the Sang King to be that close. Also very evil. Middle lane. Is that a kill? Dragon Slave? Nope. Didn't have it. Okay, I went Fiery Soul level 2. Yeah, interesting that he opted to... Well, it's it's not actually uncommon to get Fiery Soul level 2, but it is uncommon to not have Dragon Slave. Like, most of the time you see 101. Not... Uh, I, if he had Dragon Slave instead of Ellis, I don't know if that's collided, though, to be fair. Oh, no, so. no, he still gets away. Yeah, he needed both, if anything. So, look <laughs> at this battle for the bounty room. Polson actually picks it up in the end, but him and Nyx were going at it. It's a fun uh, two-minute contestion there, as we see from supports usually. Potentially happening, so no different there. But, yeah, Tusk, guys, kind of expected it. Finding himself in a little bit of trouble now. He is level two, though. He managed to get level two, at the very least. So I, middle. Diving deep again, isn't he? Trying to finish off Lena right here, Kai. Double damage rune on if he can get an auto attack off, but Mushi escaping for the time being. Impale goes off, not going to save him though. Lena goes down, now sinking. As with the Pearl Strike lined up, in fact, they're going to get a double kill out of this and should be all of a sudden double kill to work with this middle lane matchup here. Now, this is why you see the Queen. You can see his skill build, he went for the double dagger. He recognizes that Lena is a very gankable hero in the early game and that a sinking movement so far. I really expected like Ninja Boogie to either be camping mid or to try to ensure that like that that's the only place really where I think he can help. Otherwise he's just like running around doing pulls. Like sure, contesting the the rune for the offlane is okay, but you really want to make sure that your Lena doesn't get ganked too much. If you can get Mushi off to a good start, get him an early bloodstone or whatever you know, itemization choice if he decides to go. Mm -hmm. That's Dyer's ideally where you want to be. Attack. Ark almost went to the tier 2 tower in the meantime, trying to finish off Tusk, but needed the w last auto attack to get the job done, but it wasn't able to go far enough. So good job by Tusk, I guess, more so getting away. But Ark heals it up with a salve and goes back to farming, so not really the biggest deal in the world. No turn curl or anything like that happening. So I know you mentioned whatever Lena decides to go as far as the items. I suppose some of the more popular ones, you know, the Yules, does it go to the straight Bloodstone, or even the Shadow Blade is something we've seen from time to time. Any of those that you stand out to you? I think Bloodstone Silver Edge is still really strong. I mean, yeah, you're against an anti-mage. You're going to make yourself susceptible to mana voids. But at the same time, Lina excels at being able to flash farm. You've been and having the mana regeneration is just, I think, necessary. I don't think Yules is a bad choice either. And currently, he's he's really doing well in his lane CS-wise. He's leading the queen by quite a bit. Well, here middle lane, Snowball comes out. Lina's going to get caught initially, Ice Shards. Blocking the path, Burl Strike lines up on two as a result as well. Mushi just Dragon Slaves, but she's dead shortly after. Ninja Boogie, gonna boogie on out of here as Witch Doctor even comes in, but they got the important kill on Delina. So good rotation. That's, that was a four-man gank in the middle lane at four and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the the way they came, 
Um, that ward on the top side of the river was placed, I think, just about as they were going oh. in, so he didn't see the, the other hero that was coming in. But this is what happens when you pick Lina, and then the enemy team just counters with the Queen of Pain, and there's already a stun. Dark's here, avoiding here at the top lane. Witch Doctor just gonna run him down, but really, uh, Dark's here needs to be overly concerned about. Power Tread's just picked up by Ark, meanwhile, and Bloodseeker. What does Ark go for here on Bloodseeker? Um, I think I have almost exclusively seen Midas into Radiance. That is like really? the only build I've seen. Now, I that was having watched uh, European games. Okay. The C region might do something a little bit different. We did have one just earlier today, as though we got middle lane action, Mushi. He's gonna get some, it's another three-man gank here. No support nearby for him, so as you got it, it's Lena susceptible. Dude, these ganks, are, rotations continue, and that's where this Tusk is getting his farm. He's almost level four now, all because he's just ganking this middle lane. It feels like him taking bounty roots, but we, yeah, we did have one earlier today on that point. If, I wanna say he went, uh, oh, what did he go actually? It was a blade mill, or the Yasha even on top of that, so. So um, a bit more early game oriented. Though. Yeah. And then eventually even an Axe he picked up later on in the game for the double rupture in that case, but... Yeah, so we'll see what Ark decides to go for here. Only 300 gold are saved up, but yeah, Lena, she's struggling. You know, still the, sitting the on the same The crazy thing items. about this break is that this Lena's died a bunch. Still more CS than the Queen. Wow, yeah, you're Like right. 26, 11 versus 19 and 9, and he's died, what, three times? Yeah, he's 0, 3. So even though the Queen's leading on levels, the the overall farm is still favoring where she bought him as well. Yeah, Maledict is up. I think it's only level 1, but still should possibly be enough for the kill. Well, he TP's out and actually will survive. Good decision on the part of Bloodseeker right there to TP on out, despite taking so much damage and in the face of the tower. Ends up working out in his favor. Tusk. Maybe trying to catch somebody else. Ice shards, ready to go. Pearl strike as well, but just a little bit too far for their comfort. So Bloodseeker stays alive. Unfortunately for him, though, he has to walk all the way back now. This bottom lane, but he is level six. And so now that Bloodseeker is level six, is this a, you know, you get the rupture? Does he go hunting for kills, or is it more so you still want to farm and just a tool to have if necessary? I mean, it. It's hard because normally what you would see is the Bloodseeker who is level six just TP to the AM's lane and just rupture. And even if the AM lives, right, you're sending him back to base, you're preventing him from getting to the Battle Fury, you're essentially buying yourself time. Yeah. But as a position one Bloodseeker, it's a little bit different, because you still want to prioritize your own farm acceleration as well, not just hindering the enemy. Push this bottom tower with his teammates here. Actually, he applies the, uh, the Blood Rage to Jakiro there as well. Uh, the liquid fire onto the tower. Not going to be enough damage for the kill just yet. It is in deny range currently. But uh, unable to do that deny effectively at this point. Tusk again has to keep his distance. Last thing he wants to do is die just simply trying to deny the tower. So he'll let it get taken out instead. Thus the tower kill successful. Queen of Pain though. And that bottle of the magic stick. She's pointed somewhere bottom lane. Yeah, they're going to roll in actually on a Tusk. Shards come out, blocking two, Bloodseeker and the Nyx. Nyx actually running at them instead with that spike care base. Anything a distraction, it seems like. He goes down, Tusk actually gets out. It was a nice call from the Bloodseeker to run away. They recognized that the kill was taking too long, and that there was a good opportunity for the Queen to TP or make a rotation down there. And Chippy was in the area, so not losing the Bloodseeker. It's not ideal using the Rupture like that and only using it on the support. They did get the tower. He's but at mine. the end of the day, you know, Miracle is still kind of hitting creeps here. Yeah, and I got him looking at this now, the big picture. 6 nothing lead in favor of Mur of uh, <laughs> Moogle. But Miracle, as you mentioned, on that anti-mage is obviously doing very well himself. In fact, top in the net worth charts, and that's before that Battle Fury is even online. And speaking of that, I think he has, yeah, it looks like he's going to be getting the, the mana portion delivered. So Perseverance is purchased. Just need the components of the weapons now, but... Him on top of the Queen of Pain is going to be gone on here with the impel. Unless they follow up Laguna Blade, is it all enough? Absolutely not. Blink is in time. That's raindrop for you. Is under Item is super Dyer's good. This is a, a very interesting Dyer's game, though, because even with a six kill advantage, Google are still not ahead of net worth. And the experience is roughly even. So if you compare the off lanes, Bag has 63 CS, and the Tusk has 16. So the difference in net worth is almost completely Dyer's made up by the fact that Mag is having. A much better time in regards to how much farm he's getting than the Tusk, even though the Tusk has been involved in kills. 
Next middle lane, I charge up. There's a TP coming in. It looks like from Blood Seeker. There's that first Rupture. He uses it on a Merkle, actually. And the anti mage there's that damage you're talking about despite the blink and the TP, though, will allow him to survive. Be too far away, so no kills actually do happen in the middle lane. But yeah, you're right. Mag on the Starks here having a fantastic time. 3,600 net worth. He already has a Hood of Defiance. And Arcane Boots have been cute. He doesn't even have boots yet on top of that, but... He is farming very well. That's uh, But what, what kind of impact is the Starks here going to be able to have with that farm now, you think? Well, because of the fact that he went Hood first, it means no mech. No mech means your team fight is actually not maybe as strong as it could be at an earlier stage in the game. So I think that for him, he, he just has to keep farming, which is, I guess, a little bit unfortunate. Ion Shell Bloodseeker can be pretty terrifying when backed up by a mech Darkseer at this early of the stage. I, I really don't know how Mooga would be able to fight that. But considering, you know, he's put himself in a position where, yeah, he'll have the arcane soon, but that's still like 2,300 gold away from being able to even buy the mechanism in the first place. Because a hood is a, it's a greedy item in the sense that it doesn't help your team. And most of the time, Darkseers build items for their team. So even though it helps him live and it helps him like dominate his lane, you can see tier one's already dead. If he goes straight into pipe after this, does that make a little more sense to you? Or is that still even not really the best choice. Um, Cause that, that's what I'm thinking like, cause I 100% agree with you, but I guess that could be the only saving grace, right? That he just wants to go like pipe ASAP. I don't know if like rushing pipe is really better than getting a mech though. That's the problem. Yeah. Cause the, the big magic damage you have to worry about, obviously Witch Doctor, Sand King once he gets Epi, but the Sand King doesn't have blink yet. So it, it doesn't really make sense to upgrade it to a pipe. Whereas mech is going to be guaranteed effective health no matter what type of damage you're taking. It doesn't have to be magical damage. Plus, mech is exceptionally good against things like Maledict, which are based on how much health you have at the end of the Maledict versus how much you have when you start. So getting healed, like, diminishes the effect of it tremendously. And the Switch Doctor doesn't have Uta Restoration. He's, he's pure cast in Maledict. Since there, well, keep an eye on mech, but that build ultimately turns into, but I you know, definitely agree with you. This is the much greedier build, and don't know if that was the answer for Maneski of what they, they needed in this earlier game, being down 6 nothing already, and the anti mage on top of that. Obviously, he continues to farm away one of those weapons of the Bronze Sword of the Claymore is almost purchased, and sees the other. Tusk bottom lane, no Nyx. He's at half-life. Spike here, face will cause a little bit of an issue, but not enough of a delay as Lena's here, though. LSA hits two, the Laguna Blade in the face of Tusk. The final auto attack finishes the job. Madness, Sanky wants that kill, he gets it on the Nyx, but it does come at a cost as a result of that. Now Bloodseeker charging in as well, but Witch Doctor's a little bit too far away. So it ends up being a two-for-one kill. Only Nyx going down, and Lena leans up there. That was a uh, very greedy. Like, taking that long to kill the Nyx Assassin. That's what happens when you can't, like, actually stun lock that hero. Carapace yeah. just makes it so the Tusk can't throw the punch. Like, he cancel cast Walrus Punch, like, two or three times, and Dyer's eventually Mushi's rotation just ended up killing him. Patient middle lane, you have Yep, Queen of Pain's gonna jump in. There is that spike here for again. This time the Walrus Punch goes off pretty easily, and Guy is there to finish the job. So, get a little bit of revenge on Tusk there, or excuse me, on Nyx, with the uh, no response really. But now Queen of Pain, or Veil of Discord is actually almost finished. Just needs the pattern, 400 gold for that. Just around the corner here. So, gonna have that Veil and Hero that most certainly can move around with that item, and set up some kills. Except on Darkseer, probably. Yeah, Darkseer is exceptionally hard to kill. Especially with the Queen of Pain there. Do we have an answer on Bloodseeker yet? Oh, okay, yeah. This definitely wasn't earlier. He goes to Ring of Aquila, but he is going to go Shadowblade here. Interesting First choice. It's, uh, it's quite easy to kill Bloodseeker, because you usually have yourself blood raged most of the time when you want to, like, rupture someone, unless you have... If it's a 3v1, for example, you want to blood rage the target that you're pulling because then he just takes a ton more damage. But yeah, if you amp yourself and you walk in and you have a Shadow Blade, there's multiple stuns, very high magical burst damage as well. I feel like you're putting yourself at risk for just like instantly dying with this style of build. On the flip side, you also can get a jump on a hero that normally you wouldn't be able to, like perhaps Miracle. They've actually smoked up here. And Jabugi's got the Vendetta. This would be a clutch kill, because again, it would slow down that Battle Fury, if anything, and that's what you want to be doing. Bloodseeker, Rupture ready. Out of the open, this is the question. He comes out, Rupture goes off right as he plays, comes up the TP, but the Impale, yes, it's in time. And that should set up the kill on a Miracle. He's going to have to blink, and that means the death 
for Antimate. So he goes down, and that will slow down that Battle Fury now. So again, the Smoking, very successful. Spiked Carapace may cost them a Nyx life, but... Oh, does he actually get out of this? No, he does not. Well, they use the Snowball and including the Death Ward, but still with that, I still think you're satisfied. Still well worth it, yeah. Killing the Antimate is more than enough. That's really the... The big thing that Maneski wants to focus on is making sure that Miracle doesn't have a good time. Even Dyer's though Mag did very well in lane, it's top. hard for a Darkseer to bully an anti-mage out. Especially with the Witch Doctor having started top, and he waited until Miracle had his Ring of Health before he started to change lanes. And once you have that, you know, you can mana burn the Darkseer. He doesn't really want to sit on the creep wave, because if he's out of mana, he can't Ion Shell. No Ion Shell means no lane pressure, and plus, you have that built-in spell shield as well. So Miracle's still doing okay. Given the circumstances, even with the death, they'll have his Battle Fury pretty soon. Dyer's like middle tower is under attack. Tanking also just got his Blink Dagger. Stress how important of an item that is, so... Oh, initiation just got that much better. Yeah, he went straight... Well, not even straight for it. He did go Tranquil Boots first, even, so... It's a very efficient farm, though, for Kai here. He's managed to find it somewhere. They're looking to use it pretty quickly here with the epicenter ready to go. Sonic Wave also ready at the level one Sonic Wave still, unfortunately, but still. Nice to use. Was that an observer ward there? I think so. It's... There's just a, a ward war going on middle lane. Yeah. If Dyer really wants to keep their tier one mid alive. Once the tier one safe lane and the tier one mid are dead, it becomes very easy for Maneski to just make aggressive movements with their Nyx into the jungle. So, oh, uh... Darks here just walled. Yeah, no, it's actually super annoying for Miracle. Okay. Because the illusion gets the mana burn. Yeah. Now, Darks here is in a little bit of a dire spot. He is going to be stunned in. Remember how tanky he is, though. But this is essentially a full gank right here. However, buys a little bit of time. Nyx comes in. Even the mana void, not enough for the kill. And he's going to live a little bit longer, but the Maledict will finish the job. Mushi comes in fairly late. Mushi's just running, though. anti is trying to hunt him down, so that's why. But they're going to look to turn, actually, on a Queen of Pain. In the back lines, and they get her taken out. Anti Mage is throwing up with a Yulzo and can't really chase further. But a two for one. Mugo numbers advantage, but losing Queen of Pain hurts. Deny. Yeah, the Queen dropping is actually a pretty big deal, especially considering the Bloodseeker was around for that. That means it's going to have the Shadow Blade finished here in uh, just a second. Once that happens, he'll be able to potentially get another kill on Miracle. It's kind of tough, though. He really wants Ninja Boogie to be with him because the. If the AM is full HP, for example, he can blink into trees and just TP away from the Bloodseeker, even though he'll take damage, obviously, as long as he, he can't get stunned, then no one can cancel the TP. So, I was looking at the Darks here, though, as he's being jumped there, and he, look what he has queued up. So, he is going to be going that pipe, sure enough, but it goes to that logic that you were explaining earlier, though. I mean, it does make sense that the mech almost would be better. The, perhaps, the mech but... is more expensive. That's the one thing, because he already has the hood. Like, finishing up the pipe is a more inexpensive option. And it is 400 magical damage that it blocks. It's not like it's it's terrible or anything. True. It, it just feels like getting the hood while making himself super tanky, it's just delaying his effectiveness in the, the actual fights, where if he had Soul Ring Arcane's mech, then he could just be with his team all the time. Good of pain. A big kill rupture onto her. And it's going to be more than enough. A macro pyre, everything coming out. Kill that queen once again, so back-to-back -back deaths on her. This is a rough game to play queen. Playing queen into Nyx is like one of the worst things in the world. Most of your spells pretty much can just be carapaces, so you can't really throw your screams. Dark's here, and though, can they kill this? We saw what happened last time, it took forever. He goes for the back, goes for the TP. Again, that's not going to work, but unfortunately, the support doesn't get there in time. And Instead, just going to go for the middle tower. So they keep slowing down that fight, if anything. Or actually, yeah, I think he might have just gotten it before that death, so. To be honest, like, committing that much, losing your tier 1 tower, I wouldn't even say that was worth it. Like, yeah, you commit Epi and Death Ward for one hero. Although, I guess with the hero pick, maybe. Well, the hero's like, all right, come fight me. He puts the ice path down. Nyx joins the party as well. Impel on both. The cask is bouncing around. Oh. Beautiful barrel strike from Kai right there goes on through, but it's not really going to be enough as Tustil is picked off, and so is Witch Dr. Mushi, making sure with the Laguna Blade a 10% life, but one of that kill, but that mana void is the explosion going off. Down goes the Jakiro as well, and Nyx is going to barely limp away in the back lines as the Sonic Wave almost connects. Ark also going to get picked off, though, and what was a pretty start for Mineski ends up being a horrible finish, and Moogle, that mana void was just huge, though. 
That's what happens when you Laguna needlessly against an anti-mage. If he didn't use that and just, you know, auto-attack one time, or two times, or whatever it was, uh, Miracle's Mana Void wouldn't have done nearly uh, as much damage. So while I understand the idea of like getting that kill fast and trying to run away, yeah. nothing wrong with that logic. It's just the way that it worked out meant that Miracle was able to get a kill that otherwise, it just wouldn't have happened. Yeah, now anti mage 8600 net worth and going to get bigger and better. I believe it's a full Yasha being delivered to him as well. There we go. He just gets it, and the Mantis style already even queued up. So, hey, you can't really risk many more of those... Uh, Fights uh, making out like that as far as this game picking up because as we've seen earlier in the day, even Antimage, you let him have enough time and you make a couple of those key mistakes and he will definitely punish you. As the hero that he is, Nyx Assassin hunting at the top lane. We're going to run over a sentry though. And he's being pinged out, so good vision control by Moogle here. Allow them to see that coming. Tusk is level 10, by the way. We really haven't talked about him in a while, but he also went the 40% XP gain talent. Of course, at level 10, so his levels should start adding up here. He's doing a lot better than I imagined he would. Um, being a level 11, almost having the mech and the arcanes, like this is the, this is a very, I think, solid build for this type of game because you know that Mineski is going to be grouping up a lot. They have a Jakiro, they want to fight. They have like this Nyx Bloodseeker combination that they're trying to get kills with, and Mag with his pipe finish. There's more incentive for them to be together, so just going for the mech ensures that. If push comes to shove, you will be able to fight. Tier 2 tower top lane and her liquid fires put up. No OTP support coming in though, so this is definitely going to be a tower kill. Bottom lane, they're trying to trade the tier 1 bottom, so... GG figure, I mean, Mineski is... Kind of wins that advantage even, as far as... Giving a tier 2 for that tier 1, but middle lane, Lina getting picked off. It's not going to help things. Nice yields will prevent the epicenter at least, but a beautiful snowball initiation is still going on Amushi, but we're not done just yet because Takiro comes in at a pretty clutch time as Jimmy with a sonic wave will finally finish the job onto Lina. Nyx Assassin, he falls back on a spiked care base though. But Lina's dead for 45 seconds, and with that kill on top of it, I think Moogle's just satisfied. Amushi is definitely not having the best game died five times. A lot of that was, of course, the early laning phase and the yeah. rotations coming in from the, the Tusk and the Sand King, but fortunately, Lina, very good at farming. He's making his way towards the Lincolns as well, which I think is, uh, it's pretty good this game. He can stop things like Mana Void. It's one of the big ways that Lina's gonna die here, as we saw earlier when he was dead. No mana means AM is a happy person. I yeah. Dig that. And especially if he has teammates nearby. The an explosion damage with Jakiro got hit by that on the last fight. Eventually, I'll finish him too. So, yeah, that was pretty costly, no doubt. Queen of Pain hits level 15 right there. 12% cooldown reduction talent picked up as a result. Walrus Punch catches Mag. Nice Shard's also blocking him off. Yeah, I thought he could have snuck by there, but no, he could not. Frozen Sigil, though, slowing him down. And with team support coming in, they are not going to keep committing. We'll fall back. Bolson. The Shard's out, but he is now out of mana. And the backlands Witch Doctor's picked off. But, and they also get Tusk. Burl Strike in from Kai's. Really wants to save his teammate. The Snowball. It's going to go back in and basically die as a result. So, finally get the kill on the chase. But you got uh, Queen of Pain and Anti Mage just farming their own lanes. Yeah, this is a nice movement for Miracle. He's just making sure that, you know, he's cutting the creep wave. Going to make it really difficult for Vanessa to get more than just the tier 2 tower. He's even going to make his way towards mid. So, he's simultaneously pushing mid and bottom while Vanessa are grouped up at this tier 2 in the off lane and thinking to themselves, okay, is it worth it? They think the creeps are going to get the tower, it will. They'll be able to TP back home now. But overall, I think that Moogle, like given that whole exchange, and how many heroes that Maneski committed, still probably okay. Yeah. Miracle's going to have the Manta style finished pretty much as soon as he goes to the side shop. And that's, that, that's the item that makes you more or less fight capable. It's Purge effect, and of course just the presence of it. The damage amp that it brings as well. Queen of Pain, speaking of damage amp, and... Nice tool to have. Orchid has been finished on her, and they're going to smoke up S4 while anti Mage just keeps on farming. We'll see if she gets to use that new toy of hers. The Orchid. Good item to pick up this game. I mean, it's really a standard pick up on Quap, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not as effective against Mushi because he already has the Yules, but for heroes like Nyx Assassin, the Bloodseeker, Darkseer, Jakiro, none of them really have a method of dispelling themselves, so it will be incredibly effective. Smoking past their AM in the middle lane. I think that Maneski probably knows something's up. Normally, Miracle would not farm in that position, and there's a lot of heroes not showing on the map. 
Yeah. yeah. Radiance middle uh, the way they position themselves, they they knew something. So they uh, they fall back and actually are gonna smoke up themselves now. Uh, I don't know if all five. No, yeah, Lena did not get hit by it, but she's gonna push out the middle lane. I'm gonna scan around the Roshan pit, see that nobody's there. But again, uh, as we see on the minimap positioning, it doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to engage. Yeah, as Bugle's all, all at the bottom lane, really, for the uh, time being here. They could just be waiting for like TP stragglers. You know, if Moogle give up trying to make anything happen in the bottom lane and they TP back to farm top or farm middle lane. Looks like they're not intent on splitting up though. Just gonna be moving across the map as five. As far as four, I guess, is uh, Chip's kind of sticking. Yeah. They got Mushi again clearing out bottom lane. That Lincoln's just around the corner for him. Needs a thousand gold for the pattern, but they have made their way to the top lane now. <coughs> Plenty of vision down as well. On the Radiant side. I guess both sides actually have, yeah. Yeah, well, their smoke didn't find a hero, so they used it to drop a sentry and a ward. Let's try again. He goes somewhat blindly, it almost feels like, into the hero right there, but Silent Self also with the Orchid on, and Darkseer prevents it from doing much. While was punched, they get the kill. Poor Darkseer does a damn thing. The Sonic Wave committed for that. Death Ward is now out as well on Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker, that Maledict on top of him, gonna start burning him down. This should be a kill when it's all said and done. It is gonna be a kill when it's all said and done. Anti Mage helping to finish the job. On top of that, and that will be it, but you know what? They got Bloodseeker and Darkseer. Very good engagement once again. Your side. I'm kind of surprised that they were able to get in so effortlessly. Like, you saw the ward on top of the hill. It, it spotted almost yeah. all of the movement from Moogle coming in. Their smoke had worn off long ago before that fight started. It's almost like, I think Sankey just really caught them off. It's like they were not expecting it. They saw them running over, but middle lane, anti-mage, yes. Very nicely done. So an edge boogie abuses the cleave mechanic by using carapace gets the stun on the anti-mage to guarantee that he won't miss his impale and gets the vendetta off meantime top four man back will going to be enough to push we'll go back here worth them off at least so yeah no kills or anything coming out of it but you know save the tier one tower definitely can say it's worth it but yeah good execution there indeed by ninja boogie on the next assassin sets up the big kill onto uh anti-mage who Stays dead now for the next 35 seconds even. Radiant's what level is he? 19. He's 19. Is 19. That would be yeah. why. He is very farmed and very high level. That's Dyer's a good combo. Come to have 14,000 net worth. I'll take your wow, to he's, with. is he really going Lincoln's and Aghanim's? No. That is a very defensive build. I guess it, in some ways, for this game, I think it's okay. Just because he has to worry about Laguna. He has to worry about Rupture. Even getting Mana Burn can be annoying, right? And his team still does a really good amount of damage. He doesn't really need to build for the right click late game carry because the, the enemy team only has a Bloodseeker. Yeah. So that's like all their right click damage besides Lena. But, so how does the interaction work? Is it the Axe one goes off first or? I'm actually unsure. Yeah. So that's what I'm sitting here trying to wonder. Would it be, see, I, I feel like it would be the, the Lincoln's first actually. And then the, because the Lincoln's covers like everything on the hero, I would assume. Yeah, I've never, you know, I actually play a fair amount of it. I never bought both. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, well, I'm very curious on how that would work, and well, we may get the chance this game. As you mentioned, he has that queued up, not guaranteed he's going for the axe to follow up, but now yeah, at least he has the idea of it. I think it's, okay. it's okay, honestly. A lot of the time, I would say that it's not necessary. You, you either want one or the other. And most of the time you want Lincoln's because the hero needs a lot of mana regen to sustain being able to blink. And if you look at his talent build, he even went for the minus one second blink cooldown, which makes you even more mana hungry. Yeah. So in that sense, buying the Lincoln's first kind of covers your basis of having just enough mana regen between that and the Battle Fury to spam your blink. Some trouble right here. Oh, the stun not in time though. He blinked right at the stun animation. The Manchester he does to get stunned here, but now he has team support also. There's no way the rating is going in onto that. Shadow Strike connects. The next assassin has a spike carapace, see if that comes into play. They'll use, there's the spike carapace stun. Yeah, I'm in a pain, nice mana burn on top of it as the ultimate activated by Bloodseeker. Trying to finish the job, Zanking is picked off elsewhere. anti -Mage going for the TPI. No, the back is going to stop him though, and he gets picked off. Double kill. Ryer actually on the Jakiro credit for it. Shot reports away, and Tusk is also going to be caught. Hanging around here, so I, I mean, Moogle seemed like that they were the ones in a good spot right there, but they, I guess, chased a little too far. The problem was when they 
blinked and initiated on the Nyx, no one else is close enough to deal damage during the Orchid. So when the Orchid wears off and he still has care face, he pops it, the Queen eats a mana burn, gets damage taken from the Scream that was reflected by the Carapace, and gets ruptured at the same time. At that point, there's no longer anything he can do. He has to run away. Yeah. And the Nyx is still okay, right? As soon as the AM tries to TP out, he gets Ice Path, gets stuck in place. Already had popped his Manta earlier when, when he was getting ganked by the Nyx in the first place. Wow. That's a tier 3, and it looks like a melee. I mean, Antimage has, has a buyback, back, but... Yeah. They're just satisfied giving this up, I guess. In fact, vacuum on two. The rupture goes off on a tanking. He stuns in. But he's going to die shortly after this. The sonic wave used right there simply to push him back. I mean, tanking buys back immediately, but anti still sells 10 more seconds before he's up. Queen of Pain goes down. Witch Doctor goes down. What is going on here? Snowball in from Tusk, but they are going to lose the racks. Very uncoordinated fight. Now, nice stun from the Zanker right there on three heroes. And now anti Mage is up, but he's not going to be able to get here in time. It feels like, although he gets a mana void off on a Ryer, but it's not enough. Actually had plenty of mana still left over. Tusk will block him in with the eye shots. He goes for the TP. That's not going to work, though. So they get at least something out of all of that. But Mineski is very happy with that outcome. Yeah, that seemed like Mugo was not on the same page there. I'm kind of confused. Like, I think as an anti-mage in that situation when you only have 20 seconds left, you, you normally don't want to buy back. But to be honest, you win the late game, I think, as, as Mugo's lineup, as long as you're not like taking bad fights. So if you just buy back and defend and keep the lanes pushed out and don't get picked off again, then it's more than okay. But losing the racks is uh, definitely not what they want. Nice stun. Wow. They don't actually see it though. Yeah. Next, there you go. Oh, what? Oh. Go <laughs> for the TP. He's like, wait a second. What's the Scion Shield doing? Oh, boy. This is awkward. Wall goes out. It's going to whiff. And are they really not going to get in the end? They're not. Yeah, they're not going to bother chasing. That, that's Good. When you're in that patch of trees and you're chasing a Sand King with a Link Dagger, at some point you just got to be like, is it worth my time? Yeah. And most of the most of the time the answer is no. Not even going to hit the wall, but unable to catch. So that's 80 seconds now. That's going to be on cooldown. Not a big deal. Should be up by the next time a fight breaks out. So, so yeah, Antimage, though, again, at least he has money now to finish that Lincoln's. And still, according to his up here. He is going the axe on top of that as we're talking about, but um, yeah, they, they lose the top set of racks. Meanwhile, in favor of Mineski, now you got your Bloodseeker as the impulse on middle lane will miss. Uh, but Bloodseeker has a 10 second BKP and the Silver Edge now coming out. Uh, I stressed earlier. So, so why is Silver Edge going to be so important in this game, you think? Well, mainly against the yeah. Because uh, the Lina doesn't have Aghanims, which means that her ultimate is still based in magical damage. But if you get a Silver Edge on the AM with a Rupture, then you can pretty much just burst him, right? Yeah. Because you don't have the 50% uh, bonus magic resistance anymore, and you just get shredded by magic DPS, which, you know, Maneski has in spades. Basically all they have, really, besides the right click of Arc, and I guess to a lesser extent, Machine. But, yeah, the, the Aghanims and the Lincolns on the AM, this is one of the few games where I think it's, like I mentioned before, it's, it's fine. Um, it might be a little bit concerning if Art gets another like right-click damage item. Looks like he is a little. Oh wait, does he have the silver edge? No, he doesn't. Okay, so he has it on his his, um, his quick buy, but he doesn't actually have a plan for it yet. Yeah. Oh, they see Tusk over here. Snowball is going bottom. Good call by Darks here, but he blinks out as he snowballs in. Uh, Full of sin. He's clearly played this hero plenty before. He is still going to end up falling, though. Good attempt. Buys a little more time, at least. Space created, as some may say. Feels good. Nope. The Ice Path actually catches a bit of pain. Don't tell me they're going to get something else. They are. The Rupture connects as well because of it. Beautiful Ice Path from Jakiro. Max distance. That's really bad. No buyback. Yeah. Yeah, no buyback. Looks like Kai will be able to get out. Nice juke. Miracle has a DD. He should be able to get the... Oh, yeah. That's one hit. Yeah, yeah three tower. He has buyback as well, but fighting without the queen is going to be a, a bit difficult. Looks like the tower is back door protected, but they're just getting damage through it anyway. The creep wave's coming in, so they'll be able to push it back. Miracle's going to go for the creep cut after these ancients, most likely. He needs to delay. Oh no, he's not going to cut the wave. He's just going to TP straight home. So panicked right there. He also is sitting. Uh, he bought something. 
buy. BKB. Oh, yeah. This is an all-in maneuver. He, he, they, they, he buys this just a play here. There we go. Epicenter comes out. Blood Seeker. That's the prime target off the bat. In comes the combo though for Darkseer with the wall as well as the vacuum. The macro pyre on top, and they're all just melting away. You said it was an all-in move. It absolutely was. GG's called because with anti mage dead, no buyback. That will do it. Did he blink? He did use the BKB. Okay, but. No, no, no. He, he didn't. He BKB literally at 30 oh. health and then died. So he didn't BKB preemptively because yeah. he, I think in that situation, he was assuming he was a lot stronger. But the problem is he got just chain stunned. There's a sand can.